I guess I'm the first one that's reporting on this, so here it goes. Two new peer-reviewed studies emerged over this past week showing shocking numbers of myocarditis post-mRNA vaccination from both Pfizer and Moderna. One study from France, one study from Ontario, Canada. However, each study gives special insight. Now, as a side note, it's funny because when this safety signal was first seen back in July of 2021 and other countries acted on it, our CDC director, Rochelle Walensky, brushed it off, told the general public it wasn't a concern. Roll the video. To just put this in perspective, if we have a group of 12 to 17 year olds who are uh, working to vaccinate over the next four months and we can vaccinate a million of them, which would be great strides over the next four months, we could expect 30 to 40 of these mild self limited cases of myocarditis and for that if we were to vaccinate all 1 million, we would avert 8,000 cases of COVID. Okay, so clearly that's all incorrect. So if you're looking for a quick summary, here it is. The new French study I just mentioned showed that two doses of Moderna and Pfizer increased the odds of experiencing myocarditis 30-fold and 8.1-fold respectively. Then the new Ontario Canada study revealed an increased rate of myocarditis of one in every 1,200 males aged 18 to 24 who took Pfizer, then a dose of Moderna within 30 days. Anyways, that's the summary, but you really need to stay tuned because the details matter. But before we begin, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell in the bottom right hand corner so you can be notified when my new videos come out. Also, click my social links in the description if you want more content like this. I post extra exclusive content on Substack and Patreon if you're interested. Also, I now have YouTube memberships that give you access to extra content. Just click the join button above. If you want to send me a super thanks on YouTube, sounds good. Anyways, let's get into this. First things first, I'm going to pull up my new Substack post on this. So hold on one second. I'm going to scroll down to this French study first and I'll highlight this area right here. So this was a case controlled study that used nationwide hospital discharge and vaccine data of those admitted with suspected myocarditis and pericarditis post vaccination. So there were 1,612 myocarditis cases with 16,000 controls. Well, that said, taking two doses increased the odds of myocarditis 30-fold post-Moderna. And as you can see here, eight-fold with Pfizer, particularly after the second dose within one week. Okay, so now I'm going to pull up an important image. So hold on one second. As you can see, the left-hand side indicates age groups. Now look at the red squares here, here, and here. That's age 18 to 24, 25 through 29, 30 through 39, and 40 through 50. The longer rectangles to the right indicate dose number two. And looking at age groups 18 through 24 here, that number 5,900 right here, is the amount of second doses needed to generate one case of myocarditis in the 18 to 24 age group. And the same logic is applied to the rest of the longer rectangles with the other age groups. So as you can see, and that's just after dose two with Moderna, not even dose one or even Pfizer for that matter, the excess estimates of myocarditis are sky high. So then the million dollar question, does myocarditis occur more after COVID-19 or vaccination? Now let me pull up another image to answer that. <laughs> Hold on one second. Now this is table one from the French study. Look in the red box where it says, quote, history of myocarditis slash pericarditis. The number is 125. Those are myocarditis cases pre-COVID within the past five years. Now look down here where it says, quote, receipt of mRNA vaccine, right here. The number is 950. Let me spell this out for you just in case you don't get it. From this chart, cases of myocarditis from both Pfizer and Moderna are nearly 10 times greater than historic or background cases from myocarditis from over the past five years. Just to drive this home, that's 1.5 years of vaccine versus five years of pre-vaccine and mainly pre-COVID data. This is terrible. These numbers are astronomical. All in all, the data associates a very high occurrence of myocarditis with Moderna. In males and females, 
18 through 24, but also for individuals all the way up to age 50 after receiving a dose of vaccine and primarily that second dose. Now I'm going to pull up the next study. So give me one moment here. Hold on one sec. Now this is the Ontario Canada study that was just released, which in my opinion is even more shocking than the one we just went over. So I'm going to highlight these two paragraphs here. Now this was a population based cohort study using data from December of 2020 through September of 2021. And it revealed that males aged 18 through 24, the risk of myocarditis and pericarditis from COVID vaccination was around one in nearly 1200. Now, let me scroll down to an image that will help me explain this figure we just talked about in a different way, that one in 1200 figure. Hold on one sec. Now, as you can see on the left, this image indicates males aged 18 through 24. Now look at the red box on the bottom left. It says BNT162B2-MRNA 1273. That just means 18 through 24 year olds who receive the Pfizer dose first, then Moderna as a second dose. Also, if you look at this red arrow right here, it shows how many of those aged 18 through 24 experienced myopericarditis within 30 days after dose two. If you look here, that number is 777.2. So that means 770.2 18 through 24 year olds per 1 million doses administered. So reducing 777 per 1 million roughly translates to one in every 1200 or 1300. Simply put, that means for every 1200 or 1300 doses, one 18 through 24 year old would experience myopericarditis and that's the risk. And don't be fooled. It is dangerous. Historically, myocarditis post-acute phase can reduce someone's survival rate 20 to 50% within a 10 year window. So finally, let's move on to the image on the right here. From the red rectangle, those aged 12 through 17 experienced two times the rate of myocarditis from Pfizer than those aged 18 through 24 who also received Pfizer. So why did we keep prescribing Pfizer when the risk for Moderna was much less? So what does all this mean? I mean, the FDA and the CDC need to take accountability here. There have been multiple studies over the past year showing the same safety signal. For instance, there was that Israeli data that came out, a Nordic study, and even data from Hong Kong showing a strong myocarditis safety signal. There were even a couple of studies out of Ontario, this being one of them. The CDC and FDA need to take accountability now. While other nations stopped giving Moderna to those under 30, America continued administering it in ignored the safety signal. So to wrap things up, considering all the seroprevalence data showing nearly all kids have had COVID, considering there's little data to show even minor protection against severe disease and death from COVID after vaccination for most kids under 18, because they're already at very low risk, it makes no sense to push mRNA COVID vaccines on parents to give to their kids. Things need to change ASAP. CDC and FDA have to start admitting that they screwed up. Anyways, those are the facts, but if there's anything you'd like to learn in the future, please leave it in the comments section below, and I'll see you on the next one.